Hello all and welcome to Stingray Tom's Florida and another Take 5 for Florida History. Today I'll be taking a quick look at Florida's official animal, the Florida Panther, as part of my series on Florida's official state symbols. This is part 7 of the series, which so far includes the official marine mammal, shell, gemstone, mineral, and bird. I'll put a link to the series in the notes. Before I begin, I want to mention that I'll be referring to the species which the Florida panther is a part of solely as panther, regardless of whether I mean Florida's panther or the species as a whole. Using common names for animals can be problematic, and this is especially true with panthers. It's famous for having numerous names across its extensive territory. Say them with me. Panther, puma, cougar, mountain lion, and catamount. Adding to the confusion is that jaguars in South America and leopards in Africa and Asia are sometimes called panthers, especially if they're the melanistic variety with black fur, but those are two completely different species. The panther is the only large cat to call Florida home. Their territory, which is currently limited to in and around the Everglades, used to extend throughout the state and connect with a panther territory that included nearly all of North, Central, and South America from Alaska and Canada on down to Chile and Argentina. As such, they are one of the most adaptable mammalian predators on Earth. Florida's panthers were cut off from the rest of the American population and are arguably considered a subspecies of Puma concolor, the scientific name for all panthers. The scientific name for the Florida panther is typically Puma concolor cougar, though those who officially consider it a subspecies use the name Puma concolor cori. It's debatable as to their species status. While they are isolated from all other panther populations, the isolation occurred as recently as 100 years ago, and genetic testing has shown there's little difference between the Florida population and the rest of the North American panthers. On the other hand, its environment is significantly different, and subsequently, its adaptations and behaviors are as well. Whether it's considered a subspecies by the scientific community or not, it's different enough to be thought of as separate. All that being said, let's take a quick look at panthers in general. Panthers are strong predators, with muscular hind legs, which are slightly longer and stronger than the front. The longer hind legs allow them to make huge leaps, they are able to leap vertically as high as 18 feet or 5 meters and as much as 45 feet or 14 meters horizontally. They can also reach speeds up to 50 miles or 80 kilometers an hour in short sprints and like most cats are highly agile. These traits show that like most cats, they are generally ambush predators. Their prey consists of both small and large mammals such as mice, raccoons, squirrels, otters, feral pigs, and deer. They also feed on birds such as egrets, storks, cranes, and herons, and are quite willing to take smaller alligators as well. Even though they hunt alone, they really aren't limited by the size of prey they hunt. Panthers are spotted at birth and usually start off with blue eyes. As they grow, the spots fade and the coat becomes mostly tan, though their bellies are colored white or cream. They have black on the tips of their tails and ears, and their eyes also change as they mature, becoming primarily yellow. By the way, the concept of the black panther is a misnomer. Not only are the melanistic jaguars and leopards not panthers, there's no record of any actual black panther. The panther isn't one of the 11 species of cats that can have melanistic coat coloration. Panthers are one of the largest cat species on Earth, and the Florida panther tends to be somewhere in the mid-range of the species as a whole. Florida females can weigh up to 100 pounds, or 45 kilograms, whereas 160 pounds, or 72 kilograms, isn't uncommon for fully grown males. Total length, nose to tail tip, can be over 7 feet, or 2 plus meters, 
with a shoulder height of about 28 inches or 70 centimeters. To provide perspective, the weight of Siberian tigers, the largest cat species, can reach nearly 700 pounds or 317 kilograms, over four times the size of male panthers. Still, when it comes to the Florida panther, only large alligators would be dangerous, and the panthers are smart enough to avoid them. In general, panthers only have to fear humans, especially car drivers. Like all cats, including tigers, lions, cheetahs, leopards, and the house cat, panthers belong to the taxonomic family Phyllidae, under the order Carnivora. There are two subfamilies, Pantherini and Felony. Rather unhelpfully, panthers are in the subfamily Felony, not in Panthery. Go figure. Made up of mostly smaller cats, Felony has several differences with the other subfamily, though its most notable one is a bonded hyoid bone in the throat, which provides better attachment between the muscles of the floor of the mouth, the tongue, the larynx, and the epiglottis. For some mammals, including humans, it allows a wider range of movement for tongue and throat. Its most notable effect for panthers and other members of the felony subfamily is that they cannot roar and excel at purring. The subspecies felony include the cheetah, caracal, domestic cat, ocelot, lynx, and bobcat. This separates them from the leopard, lion, jaguar, and tiger, which are all in panthernae. Interestingly, the panther is most closely related to the cheetah, having a common ancestor around 4.9 million years ago. While separated by the Atlantic Ocean, it's clear that panthers and cheetah have some significant similarities, including size, temperament, and hunting styles. Panthers are also closer relatives to the house cat than to tigers or lions. The Florida panther lives in scrub pine forests, hardwood hammocks, and freshwater swamp forests, and its current range includes the Big Cypress National Preserve, Everglades National Park, the Florida Panther National Wildlife Refuge, Picayune Strand, and Ocloacoochee Slough State Forests, as well as other public and private lands in the rural areas of Florida's five southwestern counties. This makes up the only population in the eastern United States, although the panther was once common throughout the continent east of the Mississippi River. The biggest threat to the Florida panther is habitat fragmentation. While one might think that much of the southern part of Florida is a reasonably sized range, it becomes clear just how limited the area is considering the needs of the panther. Each animal lives with a home territory that ranges in size between 80 and 200 square miles or 200 and 500 square kilometers. The 2020 population estimate by the state says that there are somewhere between 130 and 240 wild Florida panthers. If we take the upper estimate, 240 panthers would require at least 19,000 square miles of habitat. However, recent surveys show that only about 4,000 square miles are available. At this point, it may not be possible to grow the number of panthers in the state. The state legislature made the Florida panther the official animal in 1982. That in itself is an interesting story. It seems that while the majority of legislators favored making the alligator the state animal, in a vote of elementary school children throughout the state, the panther was the overwhelming choice over the gator and even the manatee. Everything worked out all right, however, in that the gator has since become the Florida state reptile, while the manatee is the state marine mammal, both of which I'll eventually cover. So where to see them? Well, it's probably pretty obvious that seeing them in the wild is nearly impossible, though considering that one of the Florida panther's primary causes of death is the car, some people must get at least a fleeting glance of one on rural highways near the Everglades. That means the best places to see them are some of Florida's zoos. The last time I checked, there were panthers at Zoo Tampa, Gatorland, Zoo Miami, the Central Florida Zoo, and the Naples Zoo. They are also at White Oak Conservation in Northeast Florida. White Oak is a facility that specializes in the rehabilitation of animals, both native and exotic. As their website states, White Oak collaborates with federal and state agencies on species recovery and release efforts for Florida panthers, Florida grasshopper sparrows, Mississippi sandhill cranes, and whooping cranes. I'll provide a link to them in the video notes. 
They are open to the public on a limited basis. The Florida panther is a beautiful and fascinating animal, and while conservation efforts are continuing, they will stay critically endangered in the wild for the foreseeable future. In fact, that's likely to be the best scenario possible. The other result would be extinction. Thank you for watching another of my videos. If you enjoyed it, please like it, subscribe, and share it. I'd really appreciate it. Stingray Tom's Florida, traveling through time around the Sunshine State.